Okay, okay. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to start off by um, expressing our um, condolences and sadness about what's happened in San Bernardino County, California. You know, um, <laughs> they've had a really rough stretch. They just had a plane crash, too. Um, a training uh, jet with a crash the other day. And uh, this is hitting really close to home, county employees. So it's uh, uh, a scary reality that we in local government are facing. And uh, so our hearts and hearts go out to all of those employees and throughout the, c the country who are serving the public. We're always at risk, and it's an important reminder. Um, I, I wanted to comment, um, news came out the other day about school funding. Governor has, uh, has announced that he is distributing additional resources to some of the counties in Maryland who have experienced reduced enrollment. And I am hoping that the uh, governor will give e equal attention uh, to us counties who are incre seeing increased enrollment, uh, uh, about $17 million dollars were withheld from Montgomery County this year and uh, we, we're glad that the, the governor is interested in uh, funding the school dis schools throughout the, the state and I hope that he will uh, direct his uh, attention as well to uh, um, us larger counties with very significant needs. Um, on the fiscal side, uh, just want to draw your attention to the fact there has been a, a problem with tax distributions from the Comptroller's Office. I have a memo from our uh, D Department of Finance that we just received the other day, if you could distribute that. Um, uh, apparently, uh, there is some issue as to how they've been allocated uh, taxes bet as between the county and some of the municipalities. Uh, the Comptroller's Office has been alerted to this problem and are looking into it. We think it involves about uh, $12 million at this stage of the game. Uh, so uh, we're concerned about that. Uh, and we're not sure if it's related, but uh, we know that we are $30 million below where we would uh, expect to be in revenues for this uh, current fiscal year. So um, uh, we're getting a fiscal update from Mr. Farber on Tuesday. and. Uh, well, tomorrow, and so we'll be getting some more information about uh, the situation. But right now, um, forecast looks like we're about $98 million below projections for next fiscal year. So 37 below this year and uh, $98 million b below next year. Uh, here's an interesting thing, uh, another uh, on a wholly different subject, uh, cannabis. Uh, get ready. Uh, the state is reviewing applications for dispensaries. Two are uh, going to be permitted in each senatorial distri district for a total of 16 in Montgomery County. Um, they are allowed under the laws per permitting drug stores. Uh, apparently the state law limits uh, the ability of minors to enter those, those facilities. So there are regulations associated with this. But we have in our agenda for tomorrow a zoning text amendment uh, that would ex establish some limits in Tacoma Park. So uh, that's going to open up an interesting conversation, no doubt. Um, also, we are seeing an interest in marijuana production in the agricultural zones. Uh, it's permitted there, but uh, growing it needs a license and is subject to various controls. So that's uh, something to uh, look towards. We expect that um, these dispensaries they're subject to sa state regulation, but if they're permitted, uh, go th get the approvals. They'll probably be permitted up and running perhaps the next year, by the, in a year or so. Um, on our, the Public Safety Committee's agenda this afternoon, they're going to have a briefing on vaping and electronic c cigarettes. That's something I was uh, very instrumental in and in getting our restrictions in place on that. Uh, but apparently, um, there is a concern about the use of uh, e-cigarettes to ingest illegal substances. And so they're going to have a briefing on this subject this afternoon. Uh, there is a um, uh, drugged driving issue out there as well that our Public Safety Committee is looking into. So uh, I want to draw your attention to that. 
Um, another uh, item is uh, bus rapid transit. We had a very good meeting last week with uh, cities of Rockville and Gaithersburg. Um, got updates from the state and from the cities on uh, bus rapid transit planning uh, for the Quarter Cities Transit Way, Maryland 355. Uh, Gaithersburg, Rockville, and Veers Mill Road. And we also have a status chart that I thought you might be interested in taking a look at. That was handed out by the county DOT last week, uh, the status of the, the planning. None of this is funded for construction, and it's not all funded for planning. The one that's farthest ahead is the Quarter Cities Transit Way. But again, uh, there's a long way to go before uh, residents will see uh, any of this under construction and up and running. And here's a fun fact. Uh, we had a diversity briefing last week. Um, our county stat uh, people have uh, been looking at demographics across the county. And uh, we've discovered that fully one third of Montgomery County residents have been born outside the US. So those are um, the points I wanted to make. Uh, I don't know if you have any other questions. I got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain the impact of this tax issue um, where, again, you said the, the county may be down $37 million and $98 million for next year. What does that mean to me, the taxpayer? Do I need to cough up more? Or, or were projections off? Is this just a matter well, of projections? At, at this moment uh, in time, uh, it's, a pr it's a projection. Uh, what does that mean for the uh, taxpayer? Well, it, it means that the, the, the glass looks half full. Uh, we, we shall see. There's a long time between uh, now and when we finalize the budget. Uh, and there, there is a memo from um, Jennifer Hughes and that uh, describes this in more detail. And as I said, Mr. Farber will be going through uh, more details with us tomorrow. Uh, but it, it suggests that uh, re county revenues are down uh, across the board, except for, I believe, it's recordation and transfer taxes. And uh, as I said, there's also this little glitch in terms of the distribution. We've been a little surprised because the county, the state, appeared to be doing uh, much better. And we're not entirely sure why that hasn't trickled down to us. So those conversations are, are continuing. But nonetheless, it suggests that uh, revenues are going to continue to be rather constrained uh, under the current, current arrangement. So we will, of course, take that issue very seriously. On the uh, uh, marijuana dispensaries, 16 in the county? Yep, possibly. And then what would the ZTA would only? The, z the zoning text amendment obviously brings this to light. It uh, establishes some limits as to where these dispensaries could be located in Tacoma Park. So I, I think it's going to precipitate a bigger conversation. I was going to say, but outside of those. Tacoma Park, anywhere is OK? Where, are, where drug stores are permitted. Remember, pharmacies are licensed and have, uh, are subject to various requirements and standards. Uh, I do not think uh, that this would open the door to, uh, I believe the, the, uh, this is largely a state issue. Uh, the state is regulating these facilities. And there are conditions and terms associated with that under state law that, that uh, limit its applicability. And of course, the federal government has some issues with the whole shebang. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that, that plays out. But apparently, there has been a lot of interest in uh, facilities in Montgomery County. Uh, and then, and I'm sorry, anyone jump in, but I, uh, the vaping issue. Mm -hmm. Vaping being now used as a way to deliver drugs? Well, there's. I, w I thought you'd be interested in this. I'd urge you to take uh, pay attention to the um, a public safety committee meeting this afternoon where they're going to go into this in more detail. Have they been able to d d brief you a little bit, though? I, I am not. Uh, I can't offer you any more than that. Uh, there is a memo on this in the right. uh, uh, agenda uh, for this afternoon. But it's very limited. They'll be briefed. For the bus and rapid transit, did you say that 
none of the construction projects are close to being fully funded? I, if you look at the chart, oh. uh, you'll see um, uh, the dark is where uh, there has been funding uh, assigned to those projects. The light is where there is no uh, current funding. So these projects have been funded in varying degrees through study and analysis. Not completely. They're all a little different. Uh, and there's a long way to go between uh, to fill the, the gap between where we are right now and uh, where they might be at a point of construction. And that is uh, shown on that chart pretty clearly. Is there a priority of uh, one rapid transit route versus the other two or three? Well, I think that a conversation will uh, continue, uh, but for the county, the Curtis East Transit Way has always been our number one priority. Uh, it's been on the books for the longest period of time, and mm -hmm. it actually has had the most resources assigned to it. It's a state project as well. Okay. I actually attended the meeting. I noticed that you, you mentioned um, that well, the plans are great, but um, it would be great if you gave us an idea as to where the funding is going to come from. Well, that's always the issue with this sort of thing. Um, and um, at this point, it's, uh, there is no uh, clear plan for it. There are ideas, certainly, uh, but there's no, uh, no one has come forward with a, a plan to fund this. Mm -hmm. and, th and so again, it's pretty preliminary. Have you received any word of any potential future private donors to that? Well, I don't think we're gonna have um, any, um, uh, well, I think the, the biggest issue would be if we choose to impose some kind of tax on property owners or county residents generally that would fund this sort of a thing. Uh, there has been some interest in, by certain property owners, I believe, along the Quarter Cities Transway Quarter. I'm not sure if that's all of them. And we're talking about a sig rather significant price tag as well. For the projects? Yeah. Are you in favor of a tax increase for property tax? For next year? I was still waiting to um, look at the various competing factors. Okay. Speaking of next year, can you just talk a little bit about your priorities and goals after you come back from the break with the county council meetings? Well, uh, you know, things are going to run as smooth as silk, that's, that's for sure. Uh, but I do uh, thank uh, council. Uh, uh, president, former Council President Leventhal for uh, his work last year. I think he did a great job. Uh, next year, we'll see, obviously, there's a fiscal challenge, and I'm personally going to try to uh, prioritize our focus on economic development. As you know, um, the new Economic Development Corporation is, is um, in the process of being uh, established, and I think that's going to set a great new tone for Montgomery County in terms of our, our job growth and expanding our tax base. Do you have any concerns about uh, the MCPS situation with radon testing? They've now said, oh, we are going to uh, go back to <coughs> test and then work on um, uh, you know, mitigating the situation. Mm -hmm. In their notes to parents and what the principal sent out, and in what the county sent out, there is absolutely no mention of cancer. Um, yet if you go to the EPA site, it <coughs> says very prominently that radon is the second leading cause of cancer. Well, I'm not an expert on this by any means. I know that uh, having um, been focused on this, even the county is uh, going to undertake uh, reviewing its, its buildings for this, this issue. A lot of the question has to do with the length of time of exposure to radon, but it's cer certainly a serious matter, and I'm very glad the school system is, uh, is uh, paying attention to it. And we're all a little surprised that folks have not been looking at it, and uh, clearly it hasn't been uh, required, I guess, by uh, other regulatory environments. You said the county is going to look at its buildings. Is that new? Is that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I just asked this morning, and uh, that's what I'm told by Mr. Dice. What did he tell you? That they're going to start looking at uh, um, uh, radon testing for county buildings. But they haven't in the past because there is no regulation on that? I, I do not know. Where did you get the projected $98 million shortfall for, I think you said projects you mentioned at the beginning? $98 million is, pr 
is the projected shortfall in revenue for 2017. Okay. What, what information was that based on? Sorry. Uh, the question, is, Mr. Farber, is a, what is the basis for uh, the projection and the reduction in revenues for uh, 2017? That's what we received from the uh, Department of Finance, correct? Right, yes. And this is in comparison with the projections made last June as part of the approved fiscal plan. And what we're having tomorrow is an update of the fiscal plan. And what it shows, as uh, Council President Florine said, is that revenues have softened. What could this mean for the, the budgets for the school system? Well, it has implications. Obviously, it's, we're not looking at a, at a rosy future at this fiscal future at this point. And so it will obviously affect a range of uh, public uh, budget considerations. So for 2017, the questions, but um, so over the summer, uh, cuts were, it was $53 million in, for schools, correct? I just want to double check with that. Uh, whatever the school system chose to cut, I, I can't confirm their budgetary decisions. Is there any idea to ask, any ideas as to where short or budget cuts might be coming from next year? I mean, ninety-eight million dollars is a very large projected shortfall. Well, that that's a, a portion of uh, certainly that's true. So uh, I think it's way too early to get into the details on the fiscal seventeen budget. I believe the um, school system is about to hear the uh, acting superintendent's proposal for uh, next year. So uh, there are a lot of moving parts right now. And as far as rate on, I know 22 out of the 26 were elementary schools. On, are, is there a higher priority for those? Since those children are staying in just one room all day as opposed to high schools and middle schools where they're able to move around and not have as much, much exposure. To You'll have to add, check in with the school system about that. I'm wondering if there's been any update on the Department of Local Control since they had the bill hearing, um, the long bill hearing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that, of course, in the, is in the hands of our state delegation. Uh, we're optimistic that uh, uh, these proposals will not be successful. Uh, it would be great if they were withdrawn, uh, but again, that's out of our hands. And no word that anything's changed. I'm not aware of anything at this point. Is there a concern for uh, if property taxes were to be increased that people would actually be moving out of the county, putting more of a strain on the budget for the 2018 room? Well, I will say this, our, our, our population uh, consistently increases. So uh, Montgomery County, uh, uh, first of all, let, let's not assume anything <coughs> about tax burden at this point. Uh, but second of all, Montgomery County um, continues to be a fabulous place to live, a pa fabulous place to work, and a great play uh, to recreate. So I do intend to be the number one cheerleader uh, for Montgomery County over the coming year. And I frankly uh, uh, believe that those tremendous benefits of living in Montgomery County are where they're going to keep people here and what continue to attract people. Are you, if I remember correctly, sorry, I was late, um, that I'm sorry, and you're? Nicole Roggs of Um If I remember correctly, Montgomery County, I like it, um, has laid out previously that he would be in favor of a property tax hike to pay for schools um, and other budgetary needs. What, what do you feel about that? Uh, I'm waiting, looking forward to seeing his budget proposals. You mentioned the San Bernardino shootings, uh, two things. The, in the President's speech, he said it was incumbent on Muslims to speak out. Um, do you agree with that? And also, do you see uh, any renewed efforts at gun control uh, legislation coming out of Annapolis? Well, uh, with respect to Annapolis, I can't speak um, to what the thinking is there. We here in Montgomery County, if we could, uh, we, I am certain <laughs> that we would do as much as we could uh, to constrain uh, the availability of uh, weapons, certainly. Uh, it's uh, the challenge for, the, for what happened in San Bernardino, you know, um, is an issue with many large uh, 
diverse <coughs> communities uh, throughout this country. We are welcoming places. As I mentioned, um, a large number of our residents have been born elsewhere. And if you look at this, um, I do encourage you to take a look at this diversity map that's been put out by a county stat. The contact on this is Dennis Linders. Uh, you'll see an incredible range of, uh, of international <coughs> presence here. And so it's very hard for those of us who, who work with these uh, community, various um, ethnic communities to, to pick a target just because what we know of our Muslim community here is of their tremendous commitment to community and to good works. And it's certainly true that we have had, um, pe let's agree that we have people, have had folks of all backgrounds who've committed atrocities in the past several months throughout the country. Going back to the property tax question, um, how likely would you say it would be to be a source of contention um, on behalf of your colleagues? Uh, uh, difficult to predict. What would you say is the major difference between um, your uh, agenda and last year, the, the one that George Lemonfall laid out? Major difference between us? Uh, uh, I, it's hard to say. Um, I, George, Councilmember Leventhal was the main um, uh, pro proponent of the pesticide bill and some other bills. He had put them in before he became council president. Um, that, uh, you know, we've, we've covered that ground so far. It's, I don't think that that's going to be, uh, that kind of activity is going to be something I'll, I'll advance personally, but I can't speak for my colleagues. This is a, an engaged, engaged um, and thoughtful uh, group, so uh, I would be, it would be wrong of me to predict uh, what they're going to suggest and propose in the coming year. When we spoke on uh, Friday about uh, some of the priorities for your budget, we were talking about wanting to um, bring back some of those put more money into some of those little budget falls um, that you had experienced. What areas did you want to focus on? Well, you know, right now, uh, we're just sort of, we're trying to uh, preserve existing services. And I think it's going to be um, tough to initiate uh, new uh, initiatives under the current um, budgetary forecast. That's not to say we won't look carefully at what we're doing and uh, making sure that what is being uh, uh, implemented at the county level is thoughtful and responsible and careful and fiscally sustainable. Uh, but the question is, I, I don't see a lot of, of, of great opportunity for new spending uh, presenting itself at, at this moment in time. Now, are there um, specific uh, services that you're more concerned about of not having any cuts in, just kind of keeping the, the funding? Uh, well, on the county side of the equation, this council has always been uh, most uh, concerned about protecting our most vulnerable residents. Uh, and that has been a theme uh, since I've been on, a member of this council. I don't see that changing. Obviously, the issue of school funding is uh, ever-present. But that's a separ so something of a separate balance sheet. What do you mean most vulnerable residents? People who have no, uh, uh, folks who are extremely ill and have a uh, few resources, uh, people who are uh, without um, housing opportunities, uh, people at the lowest end of the economic spectrum. Montgomery County Public Schools has been seeing an increase in the number of farm students or students with free and reduced lunch, so that would, that would include them too. Well, that's school funding issues. Again, I'm talking about the county side of the, of the balance sheet, but it's, a, it's, it's symptomatic of our uh, community and uh, of great concern. And these are also residents who um, can feel the brunt of uh, increased property taxes or other increased fees and costs. I'm sorry, uh, can't will okay. uh, through rent increases and the like. So um, 
every time we look at increased fee, ways to in increase fees and uh, taxes, that can have uh, a, a really significant impact on all our residents. Uh, it's not it's so easy to um, uh, identify a particular group of residents who can afford to pay and, and uh, eliminate a, a collection of residents who cannot. It's always a challenge in looking at budgets and uh, taxes and revenues. And surely you laid this out before I um, really arrived late, but what is your main legislative priority going forward? Well, I, I, my personal uh, legislative priority is to uh, keep us on track, uh, continue us as a uh, st state economic engine, and uh, continue to provide the great services uh, that Montgomery County is known for. That all takes money. And so the issue is uh, how we expand our tax base uh, to achieve that end. Do you feel like there's a certain sector that um, is ripe for growth that needs more investment, for example? Uh, what I said at the, uh, perhaps before you arrived is uh, one of the things I want to um, prioritize is our, our work in supporting our new Economic Development Corporation, uh, which is now going to be a uh, private uh, uh, driven by the uh, private sector in terms of moving us forward. Hopefully it will be more nimble, more responsive, more flexible, and more creative in uh, creating uh, a positive business em environment. So uh, that's my hope that it'll, it will be um, uh, a really, um, a new, st it'll take us to new levels in terms of creating uh, a positive business environment for our residents and of course the uh, associated production of jobs and income which is really what people are here for. Do you have any tangible examples of that? For example, um, marketing um, Montgomery County community better for other states to businesses to move here or job training or like what does that mean? Uh, making more nimble, how so? Well, it, uh, I'm a, a a government, uh, uh, you know, as a legislative branch of government, uh, uh, what uh, we, th we believe the private sector can do better is to speak to its own kind in terms of uh, uh, using the language uh, of business, uh, talking to business, uh, uh, thinking about what makes the most uh, economic sense for a business what a b business needs in terms of staying here, in terms of uh, moving here. And uh, I think just having a uh, somewhat different approach to business development. Um, and uh, that's, I think, one of the big advantages of this new corporation that I really think will make a difference here. Okay, they're coming up with uh, new regulations perhaps that they would like to be, you'd be open to being more flexible on, on certain regulations that they would. Well, you know, there's always a certain concern about, you know, are we overregulating uh, that community? I'm not sure that's a real issue. I think the real issue is uh, uh, marketing the county uh, to the to um, the country and the world, uh, which we have had, you know, we've had limited resources uh, put into that over the years. But uh, we we need to get out there and we need to expand our efforts in that regard. Any plans to meet with Governor Hogan? I'm hoping to see him on, um, although I don't have an appointment, I'm hoping to see him uh, this Thursday. He'll be at our uh, Maryland Association of Counties Conference in, uh, um, in, uh, on the Chesapeake. And what, what will your message be if you get to talk to him? Uh, well, I'd like, uh, I certainly want to uh, uh, congratulate him on a successful battle with cancer. Um, and uh, again, uh, to remind him uh, that he received, um, I believe, over 100,000 votes in the last election, and that should make Montgomery County near and dear to him in his uh, legislative priorities. Has he visited here since he's been elected? I, I am not sure. I certainly not at no event I've been at, but that's not to say he hasn't been here. I don't know. I, I would like I would like to think that we could improve our uh, uh, <coughs> expand our relationship with him. I had met Governor Ehrlich um, early on in his campaign in his, when he after he became governor 
Uh, but Mr. Hogan has gotten a pass with his cancer. Do you have any plans to meet with the, the current interim superintendent of schools? Meet with him regularly. Oh, yes. Sure. Um, okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I, as you know, don't hesitate to let us know if we can help you with information.